Welcome again to today's Living Wisely, Living Well satsang, where we take a daily reading from this book by Swami Kriyananda. And one of the nice aspects of this book is that it's not philosophical, although he does, it's, it is in its own right, but it's meant to be very, very practical, how to uh, practical things that we can do in order to improve our lives and to be more effective in our day-to-day -day workings with either with other people or just practically approaching our lives in the mundane affairs. And today the topic was uh, uh, being patient with others. That was the assigned topic. But as I began to read the reading for today, I, it uh, occurred to me that I'm going to change the title to you know, Listening Patiently to Others. Uh, because that's, in a sense, what Swami Kriyananda is addressing here. And Swamiji says, Give people the time they need to express themselves clearly. The rhythms of thought vary, but sincere self-expression requires careful and sometimes prolonged deliberation. Now, of course, what Swamiji is speaking here is listening to others, but I thought it was a, a bit uh, humorous in my mind. Sincere self-expression requires careful and sometimes prolonged deliberation. I know many people, as I'm sure you do, that deliberate only a nanosecond before they say something. And, <laughs> and uh, you sort of wish that people would deliberate a little bit more before they say something. Well, I'm just joking here, but uh, I do think that each of us know people that uh, do speak rather quickly without thinking beforehand. And I, uh, but the topic today is we're talking about listening, listening to other people and having that skill and that talent to actually be able to listen. Now, when I say the word listen, I'm not meaning physically to hear somebody, I'm, as long as we have the, the capacity to do that. We put ourselves in someone's presence and we can hear them. But that's very different than listening to somebody else, isn't it? If you think of the two words, hearing versus listening. And I suppose that everyone who is watching and participating tonight has had the same experience as I have. And you probably know people in your life like that, like this. And this is the that person that we're speaking with sometimes that as you're speaking to them, you just know, you can see very quickly that they're just waiting for you to finish what you have to say. And they're antsy, waiting for you to finish so that they can jump in and tell you everything that they have to say about something. And you know when that's happening that they're not listening to you. They're not really listening to you. I was thinking of, of you might be talking about, oh, last night, it was such a blessed evening. I had, the, I had a vision and, and Babaji came to me last night and, and the person was saying, oh, well, you know, I had a great night last night too. You know, I went to the movies and I saw this great movie and, and so and so. And, and how do you feel when somebody says something like that? You just shared something with them, very sacred. And immediately they start talking about themselves. They start talking about what they did, what, they, what their needs are and what, and what they said. And you can tell they had absolutely no... Uh, uh, concept of what you had said and it's like throwing pearls before swine as it says in the Bible you don't want to share something with with somebody that's insensitive that way and so self-absorbed in their own world that they have no ability to relate to what another person is saying now we don't want to be that way and and you might want to pay attention if you have uh, that a little bit of tendency I know sometimes I think as all of us we have done that ourselves. We, we notice it perhaps in other people, but it just is a mirror to something that we too do. And you might want to think about this little bit of antidote. You see if you can go a conversation perhaps, take a, a, an hour, an evening, a day, see if you can carry on a conversation without using I or we. See if you can do that. And you can, I've tried it, it's possible. Uh, but, uh, and you see how much of our conversation is coming from expressing something about what I want and what I need and, and what I did. And to the degree that we do that, now some of it's practically, we have to do that to function in this world. But oftentimes what we're doing is we're 
preventing ourselves from listening sensitively to perhaps what another person is saying and to being open and we're imposing ourselves on that conversation. Now, what happens in a private conversation between two people is symptomatic of something larger that what I'm referring to perhaps more importantly is that is our approach to life in general. We tend to impose ourselves and our impressions upon life to the effect that we, uh, we can't hear, we can't listen, we're not able to receive that uh, uh, we're, not able, we're not able to be sensitively attuned to what is going on around us. There was a, a man that Swami Kriyananda uh, met and he, he heard a phrase that this other fellow used that was stuck with him and, he, and in the years after that Swami Kriyananda uh, repeated it many times and somewhat made it his own and he was at a conference of leaders of from different spiritual communities and this one fellow used the phrase in his uh, discourse of trying to see in life and ask the question what is trying to happen here whenever he ran into a, a, a difficulty a situation a group dynamic what is trying to happen here and Swami loved that phrase and he began to use that as well what is trying to happen and to understand or to be able to answer that question in any situation means the ability to sensitively and intuitively be able to perceive on a subtle level, not on the surface. Hearing, you might say, takes in the, the sounds and observing and the intellect might take on the, uh, the uh, what is, see and analyze what is happening. But underneath, what we want to understand is the meaning of what is happening, the feeling, the listening, what's trying to happen here. Now, there's a few things you might, and especially as, it, as the reading applies here, is when somebody is trying to express something and you're carrying on a conversation, that person may have, especially if it's something sensitive, something meaningful, it may, be, it may be something that they can't easily express right away in words. And so you have to be helpful to that person. You, have to, you can help others bring out their meaning. And I think when we engage in conversation with each other, we shouldn't be thinking so much, what am I going to say next? But we should tune in to what is the other person saying and then try to help that person bring out what it is they really mean clearly because some people are better with words than others, and if you can help that person. And one of the things you might uh, think of is when you're having such a conversation with others, is don't impose your own idea immediately. Somebody says something immediately, well, I say, I did this, I did that. Listen and ask questions of the other person. The sense you try to draw out of that other person, if you can. I, I've often commented to people, if you want to be a good conversationalist or thought to be a good conversationalist by other people, be quiet and just ask questions. And the other person, let them do all the talking and they'll go away thinking, oh, it was such a wonderful conversation. He has, he's so brilliant. He just know <laughs> because you allowed them to speak. Now, I'm, I'm joking here, of course, but uh, there's a principle there too. But if you can ask another person, Tune in to what they're trying to say and then ask them a question to clarify it. Clarify that. And it'll help that person bring up to a clear level in their own consciousness the thought that they were having. And this is a service. And in the meantime, also, it'll help you as well. And you'll find it creates a meaningful bond between people. There are some people that have difficulty making human bonds with others. And I think one of the reasons is, is they don't listen because they're imposing their own selves. And that creates a block between one heart and another when we're trying to, uh, you know, for whatever the reason might be, we're, we're trying to uh, come forth with our own thoughts, our own ideas at the expense of the other person. So try to understand what the other person is, say, is saying. Now, I've mentioned this um, in many times in other discourses, and, uh, something that uh, 
I had once heard a wise man say, he says, the necessity for us to be able to really listen to other people, or even you might say to practice silence, which I'd like to say a few words about as well, is to overcome our individual need to be heard. Isn't that, I think that's quite perceptive. Our need to be heard. There's an impulse inside of us that wants to, uh, they want to, I need to be heard by other people. And why is that? There's no need. It's an egoic thing, that need to be heard. And I think one of the, a good cure is a practice of observing silence from time to time. This is a time-honored spiritual tradition. Certainly in the Ananda world, uh, it's, a, it's always been a tradition. And sometimes people, you'll see people with little, badge on saying, please excuse me, I'm observing silence. And, uh, uh, and try it, try it for a day, or perhaps if not a day, try it for an hour. See if you can do it for an hour. We're in the company of other people or in a, in a situation out in the world, just be quiet. Don't speak if you don't have to. Try it for a day, try it for a week, try it for a month, it can be done. I've done it for a month done it for two months. And you'll find that this, this need to be heard begins to recede and a calmness begins to come inside. The mind itself, when it's after observing silence for a period of time, begins to calm down. And you might say the waves that are very small waves become elongated. And they, as that begins to happen, not only does the mind become calm, but the physical body itself and the mental side of our being begin to become energized. We don't realize the degree of energy, the amount of energy that we lose strictly by speaking too much, or you might say speaking needlessly. Also, if you don't want to practice silence, you might think about speaking, uh, is it necessary what you're saying? There's a, I know when I was, now, first time I practiced silence for any length of time, consciously, uh, and obviously sometimes nobody there, you don't speak, but consciously as a spiritual discipline, I found that it was actually kind of rather difficult. Uh, the, I remember sitting at a, in a dining room, I kept to myself so I wouldn't have to engage in conversation, but I, I would, on the next table over, I heard two fellow devotees arguing about a certain factual point over which I knew the answer. And, and they were arguing about who was right. Was it this or was it that? And there was this impulse in me that I just had to intrude on there and share my great wealth of knowledge on some minor detail over which they were, over which they were arguing. And I could see the mind immediately being drawn out the senses, the uh, drawing us out into engage in something that was trivial. But how often during the day is that happening to us when it's not necessary? It's not necessary. The power will come if you can learn to withdraw that and to control it. And concomitantly, at that same time, begin to listen, not just to other people's conversations, but begin to listen to life. What is life? trying to teach us? What is trying to happen here in, in whatever situation we find ourselves in? And this, you could say, is we are asking our intuition to begin to grow. And to the degree that you begin to listen, yes, first physically or with audibly, if you begin to listen, you'll find that the intuition begins to, to take on a flowering, begins to happen. And little by little, life itself begins to speak to you, the circumstances begin to speak to you, and you begin to understand on a level that is impossible when we're filling the airwaves with our own views. Now, to do this, you might say the power or the ability to be able to do this is related to this other side of what we were speaking about today, and that's the, uh, the, the power of patience. To be able to be patient, patient endurance, as uh, St. Teresa, one of her songs says, the, be able to, to wait 
you could say, or to act or to say something at the right moment and in the right time. It's not, patience is not a passive uh, practice. In other words, just sitting back and passively not saying anything. But patience is an active practice of attuning ourselves to the situation of what is trying to happen here, being patient and waiting for the appropriate moment to add whatever it is that we have to offer to the situation. So consequently, listening to another person, there is a, that there is a proper time to interject that sensitivity, that's the that patience demands it, is to be able to not intrude, to not overcome that need to be heard, and to wait for right moment to be heard. Now that, what is that right moment? The right moment is when whatever it is that you have to offer is going to be useful. Is it useful? This is something you might ask of yourself when you're speaking, when you're, when you're engaging uh, with, with uh, other people. Is what you have to offer useful? Is it beneficially useful, not just an observation? And you'll find is that, that in the practice of that, of waiting for the right moment, there's a certain calm that begins to come over you. I, you could say that, think of patience as with children. Children are impulsive. Something happens and immediately they have to say something, do something, and they can't wait. You know, there, there's, a, there's an impulsiveness to their actions. A thought crosses their mind and they're, they're off and they're doing it. And, but as we grow up and we get older, we begin to watch and say, well, that's, we, we begin to control our impulses and then begin to use our reasoning. What is the right time to, to inter, interject whatever observation we might have. And if you don't wait for the right time, it's like giving mathematics to a child. You can give a, it's not going to be useful if, if a person to give higher mathematics to a child if they don't even know arithmetic yet. You have to wait for the right moment. It's often a story's been shared. Uh, many of us have shared at the time that Swami Kriyananda was asked to uh, correct another person that he was in our ashram in California at Ananda village. There was somebody who was a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say misbehaving, but uh, perhaps needed some guidance, let's say, let's put it that way. And a person came to Swami Kriyananda and says, you know, Swamiji, if you, this person really could use some correction here. And of course, uh, Swami often didn't like people to come forward with that sort of advice because usually it was, came off as complaining and Swami did not like complaining or complainers when they acted that way. But nevertheless, he could recognize that what this person was saying had some merit to it. And Swami said, okay, you know, yeah, okay, he would do that. And nothing <coughs> happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. And uh, until finally, a long time, went by and it was many, many years later, I don't remember the exact number, but quite a few, went by and finally Swami mentioned something to this person and the person responded positively and, and somebody later asked Swami that, that, why did it take you so long to, you know, to say something to that person? And he said, well, the person wasn't ready to hear it until that time. That much time it had, years had gone by, until finally that person was able to hear what that person had to say. Now that is patience. That's something many people don't seem to have. They notice, perhaps they, they see another person and they come up and say, well, that, that person needs to have something pointed out to them. You know, they have a fault I, and I can see the fault, so therefore it's my job to do it. Is it? Is it really your job to do that? Well, that's one thing, and two, is it the right time? If a person is not open to receive what you have to say, it's going to probably do more harm than good. You have to wait for that time to, to be able to pick the right moment. Now, I looked up when I was, when I was uh, this actually was this morning, I was reading what the reading was going to be for this evening. I saw patience, what is patience anyway? And I looked it up in the dictionary 
And I saw that patience is derived from uh, an old Latin word, uh, or the root of it, that means endurance. It's one of the roots of the word patience. It comes from endurance. The ability to endure. Now, that is actually interesting because Sister Gyanamata, the uh, foremost lady disciple of Paramahansa Yogananda, said the spiritual path can be described as learning to endure. Now that sounds a little bit grim in a sense because we think endurance, we think pain or discomfort or something along those lines. But I don't think she meant it that way, although she, she did have her physical troubles and was did had the power to endure. But really, it's, you might say, the slings and arrows of great misfortune that come to us, all the challenges that come to us, the ability to absorb those and take them in and process them without reacting to them. Isn't that, isn't that so often what, we, what uh, seems to be missing in our lives? Things happen and we react. But the path of yoga is learning to overcome that reactive process, learning to, to perhaps sometimes uh, absorb them. Uh, if you're in a, an elevated state, there's no discomfort in that of absorbing them. They're just things that happen and they come in. But sometimes there's a bit of tapasya in that, in the practice of patience, to be able to allow other people to be who they are, to allow them to act as they are, to be able to accept the world as it is. I think if we can learn that quality of acceptance, learning that life goes on, that we're here, we, it's, uh, that it's not, you could say, it's not our world, it's God's world, to be able to accept what comes of itself, as Swami Kriyananda so often would say, accept what comes of itself, and, but not just passively or supine, supinely, be able to accept circumstances are, as they are, accept what comes to us as our karma, that which belongs to us, and to deal with it appropriately. And what is appropriately? Calmly, resolutely, with courage, and to go forward. And this is all, all of these qualities of endurance, acceptance, are all aspects of this quality of patience, of being able to, of, uh, the, it said, there's a, uh, that quote, which perhaps you have heard, it said, all comes to those who wait. And patience is, uh, is, is uh, you might say, the virtue that if you're willing to wait long enough, it'll come to you, whatever you want. Now, I'm not exactly sure I'm going to uh, recommend that because it does take a certain active spirit as well to be able to affirm our will. Master was a man of, of great will, but nevertheless, the appropriateness of the right moment and, in, and the ability to endure whatever is necessary in order to be effective. Isn't it true that life is really measured? You could say the spiritual path is measured by that. Is, is it effective? Does it work? This was one of Swami Kriyananda's um, uh, tests, you might say, about the rightness of your action, the rightness of, of any direction that you choose to go. Right action is that action which takes us to our goal. Right action is that which takes us to freedom, which is, was our, is our goal. But when you have to measure it in the day-to-day -day activities of life, of what's happening, and, uh, how do you measure it? And one of the things was, do you feel freedom? Do you feel calmness? Do you feel upliftment? Do you feel joy? Well, those are, the, of course, the spiritual qualities we tell people to look inside and to feel those qualities and to measure life's, uh, your responses to life in those ways. But also, very practically, you need to ask this question, of, uh, is, does it work? Is it effective? Does it lead you to what you're trying to achieve? And this is, this, this is something that we need to apply to this quality of patience. Patience is the ability to be sensitive by listening, by perceiving, 
by our intu developing our intuition to choose the right moment, to be in tune with the rhythms of life, to, be, to understand what is happening here, and to patiently wait for the right moment to take our action, and then, and then to put our energy uh, into it. Now, that patience sometimes demands endurance. It demands us to be unshaken in the midst of crashing worlds around us until just the right time. Just before you might say the house comes crashing down, we choose that moment now. You know, or it's like, uh, now, shoot, Arjuna, shoot, now. Now's the time. And Arjuna listened. He listened to Krishna for that instruction. And of course, Krishna is our own higher self. Look within to find the right moment and be guided to take action at that time and develop this quality, patience and listening to act at the right time. Many blessings to all of you this weekend.